Give uh, thanks and make dua for his efforts that he did for our community. And now his son has taken over, so mashallah, that's wonderful. Um, the only issue that I have with the program is that you heard speaker after speaker today talk about how we have to do the work and how we have to get and help these candidates. But to do that, it's really hard after you have nahari as part of your lunch, right? So typically, after you do all that nahari, what do you do? You go to sleep. So I don't think too much activity is going to be going on after this afternoon. Um, but in seriousness, I'll just share some insight that I had when I ran for office. When I had ran in 2000, it was the first time in the history that a Muslim was running for, the Salvation was running for a circuit court seat in Illinois. And, um, thanks. So you saw that, alhamdulillah, I was the first one to run. I was also the first one to win a primary seat um, in 2000 as well. And then, alhamdulillah, you know, we ran a wonderful race. We came up a little short. We, Fell short by 0.6%, but I received 229,700 votes. And that's the, mo that's the most of any Muslim in South Asian in the history of Illinois. So alhamdulillah, I feel, even though I didn't win, I feel like I won in many sense, with many firsts. But before I got there, the question is, how did I get that? How did I get that? So that's what I want to talk to you about today. How did I get those votes and how and it didn't start because uh, you know I wanted to jump, jump and run for uh, office. I started by being what's called a precinct committeeman in my precinct in DuPage County, and specifically where I was living, which is Bloomingdale Township. In 2013, I became a precinct committeeman, and when we had elections or when we had meetings, I started attending township meetings, and then I used to attend and help out candidates. So somebody was saying about um, helping candidates, I remember very vividly that I would go put up signs when it was raining, when it was snowing, knocking doors for candidates, etc., without any intention of running for office. And we did that for many years, and after that, you know what that did? It did a couple things. It made me known within the Democratic Party of DuPage. It also gave me some level of credibility as a worker, and somebody who supports the party. And I think that's very important. So. What I want to do is that it's wonderful and I encourage people to run for office, but before you do that, get involved. Get involved in just being somebody part of the political organization. And the best way to do that is join the township organization if you're in the suburbs, or in the city of course, if you have wards and things like that. But be a worker, uh, develop a sense of credibility within the political system so people know you, they trust you, you can't just come in and start running for office. I mean, a lot of people do that, but if you want to run for that, you need to have millions of dollars and you have to have some connections. But for most of us, particularly people of color, minorities, we have to put in the work. We have to sacrifice and put in the time. That's what we all need to do. Help candidates. They don't have to be Muslim. They don't have to be you know, from, from our community. They can be any candidate that you believe is a good candidate. And in particular, people of color really need your support whether they're Hispanic, African Americans, and others. So put in the time and be a worker in the political process. That's the most important thing I can tell you. It's wonderful that you run for office and so forth, but until you're part of the system, and I remember telling this to somebody the other day, when I joined the Democratic Party, we used to have these parades, right? So I was part of what's called the Rose Parade and there were Labor Day parades. And we would be in the parade we would never see anybody from our community as part of the parade or along the parade route. But the rest of the community was there. Your local community, whether it was in uh, Naperville, whether it was Roselle, whether it was Bloomingdale, whether it was Carroll Stream, your entire neighbors and people who are involved in the community are along the parade route and they're part of the parade. But you know who was missing? We were missing. And that's just a simple example to show that we, we have to be part of the community. The issue is not about running for king office and supporting candidates. You have to be part of the social, political fabric of your respective communities. So get involved and be part of the community. Help candidates, obviously, but from your own community or others that you think are worthy. I remember very early, I used to help candidates who I thought were honorable people, ethical people, and who had a chance to win. And 
And that's what I would look for in candidates and support them. And then, you know, and that allowed me to kind of get part of the process. Then I'll finish one uh, this uh, statement with one other thing. The other day, a couple weeks ago, we had the DuPage County uh, Democratic Gala. It's an annual event, big dinner. We have all the major speakers from all the party offices came, uh, senators, Congress people, and so forth. They, um, and I knew this because I attended many of these events before, and this happened right a week after the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. So to me, in our community, it was a major event. But also I felt that this was a major event for the United States, because Turkey is a major ally, and what's happened in the situation with Syria is very significant. So as a result, I contacted the chair of the party, I said, look, people are suffering, almost 50,000 people have passed away in Syria and Turkey. Turkey's a NATO ally, it's part of Europe. We have to say something about that. And can we mention uh, support for the people who are victims? And the chair said to me, Azam, why don't you do it? So Ken Neal said, you go ahead, I'll put you in the program, you can say some words about Turkey. That would not have happened unless I was involved with the party, and the party trusted me. <laughs> Nobody knows any of this until I just revealed it today. Why? It's because it's important for us to be part of the political process. It's not only about winning. Alhamdulillah, winning comes once you lay the groundwork and then you can have people, you know, by luck or by their hard work win, etc. But the bottom line for us today, put in the time, being involved, and you know, the Quran says in uh, verse uh, 104, chapter 3, that let there arise from your community that believes in justice and equity and good. That's what we have to do. So just because we're involved in the political process, just because people do certain things that we deem to be unethical, that doesn't mean we engage in that. Our presence in the political process should leave people thinking that person's honorable. That person who is helping me, who's involved, who is an elected official, who ran for office or is a candidate is an ethical, good person. And that's why we want to support them. That's exactly how everyone should feel when we get involved. So with that, thank you so much. Best wishes to the C4 organization and Jazakallah Fair. Thank you all and have a wonderful remaining weekend. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. I know we're uh, you know running into like the end time almost, so we're gonna try to keep moving fast and wrap this up, okay? So please give us some time and be patient. Thank you very much. Uh, Nazmi and Hush, you were gonna come up for a second. She had to go knock doors. That, like we said, it's hard work running for office. So we're gonna try to have our elected uh, people running for office come up uh, here to wrap up at the end. But she's gonna take a minute to just talk about herself and what she's doing. Salaam I want to first of all say thank you to CIOGC and everyone who is here. This is my third time running for office. My first race was in 2013 for Hanover Township. I made history being the first woman in 152 years to run for office. I lost by less than 1%. But I want to make it history this time running for Streamwood Village trustee, Nazneen Hashmi. I'm on number one on the ballot. The reason I'm running is we need diversity. Yes, Alhamdulillah, we have Rizwan Bai, Rizwan Amha on board at Streamwood Village. I want to make call with today the if I don't see him here, Dornati. I have done with my dad and other elected officials Dornati in Elkhart, Indiana. That was one of the challenging things. There were eight people, we were in a van, we went there and uh, we were only 11 people, so they have to partner, and somebody said, who wants to go alone? I said, I'll go alone, I know how to door knock. And later I saw in the van, two ladies got back and sat in the van because somebody said, there are felons who ask if they can walk. People freaked out. Alcant in Indiana is a really poor city. But, Door knocking is really essential. People throw their dogs or they say, get out of my property. But you have to be strong enough and go door knock. That's how you will get votes. But uh, my request is, please, I need volunteers. 
I need all those who live in the stream would vote for me and I need funds. I went for one of the open seats. They actually incumbents three positions, five candidates running. So I need $13,000 for a Streamwood Village trustee position. Kindly help me. My website is nazneenfortrustee.com. Any help on 19th, Senator Karina Villa is going to help me door knock the 13th. The reason I'm running, being an auditor, I want to make sure municipal funds are not misused and no tax hike. And diversity needs to be on board. We have 17 communities in Springwood Village. Thank you, Jazakallah Khair, everybody, and elected officials and CIOGC. Go for it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nazi. Yeah, she's a very active individual. I think she's worked in the Indian American Democratic Forum, also very active in a lot of activities. We're going to get Nabila Sayyid on the Zoom presentation. She's going to talk now for a few minutes, but while we're getting her on the screen, I'm going to have Brother Shanawaz just come for two or three minutes talk about the C4 and what we can do with it. Brother Shanawaz, please come. Assalamu alaikum. You have had your lunch, right? You could say it louder. Assalamu alaikum. It's not better. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. You know, uh, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for attending Saturday afternoon. I know we all have things to do on weekends, but I want to thank you for taking time and come to this luncheon and encourage the younger generation Muslims who are competing for the political positions in the greater Shikhtavara area. Remember one thing, they are doing this for you. They are doing this so we as Muslims would be identified as somebody who should be respected, somebody who should be recognized, somebody who are contributing productively to the society we live in. So let's keep that up, let's keep the encouragement of the younger generation who are standing up to, for the betterment of the community, help them as, as much as we can. Like she said, the various people have said how you could help. So please follow their advice and do what you can. And like you said, you need to be active. If you are not, what is it, if you're not on the menu, you're on the table. So remember that. Where do you want to be? You decide. You know, the C4 that we are that we are trying to reintegrate right now. I actually it's a great child of Brother Bassam Usman who is with us. Brother Bassam, thank you very much for thinking. Okay. And uh, we have this C4 Action Network. We have So uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through all the details because Khalid has covered a lot of my uh, activities that C4 does. So all I want to emphasize is why why uh, you should support C4 and why is C4 important and why is C4 important as being part of C4. Those are three questions. So let me, uh, you know, Basically, it all boils into civic engagement, right? So, what's civic engagement? It's like individual like you taking actions to identify, address, and influence the issues that affect you. You need to decide what, what issues affect you. And there are a lot of issues that affect us. We all know that. So, okay. Civic engagement is a good issue, advocacy, lobbying, and political activity. I'm not going to go through all these because it's going to take time. Okay, civic engagement could be conducted by C501C3, 501C4, and some other political entities, 527. But however, Okay, 503C3, the main difference is the deductions that you make to 501C3 are tax deductible, but however they cannot do, they can only do limited advocacy and lobbying is very limited. And then of course political activity is absolutely not allowed. So here we are, we are at a political platform, we want to influence things in politics.
So we gotta have a platform that can do that. That's where the C4 comes in. And why, and what C4, the reason C4 has got unlimited legislative lobbying and advocacy we could do. We could involve in, get involved in electrical and political activity and in the endorsement of the candidates, which is what we have done in the 2022. We endorsed the political candidates and actually we had an endorsement done in 2018 when Basam was there too. Cost. So, Alhamdulillah, this tradition will continue. Khalid went through the pains we take to endorse the candidates. So, we will follow that protocol, inshallah. And of course, the plan is to fund the candidate down the line. And the way to do that is have political action committees, and which we, we will hear about it in the future. But right now, it's not the time for it. Now, so the limitation, because the limitation of COC, CLC is free. We, they cannot do politics, they are limited lobbying in exempt purpose. That is why we come, here. we come into play. This is what we do, uh, this is what we are tasked to do. Yeah. So, the, the solution is to 501c3 organization may establish a separate 501c4 to expand its lobbying and political reach. So that, you know, people might ask why is 501c3 connected with 501c4 connected with 501c3? There is your answer. You could establish a 501c4 or 501c3. This will give you the expanded lobbying and political outreach that you need. And then, of course, this goes to the lobbying, what it means, and then the political activity allowed by, not allowed by for CRUs, C3, and then the prohibitions of the 501c3. Uh, are enumerated up here. I want to move forward because a lot of things have been covered by uh, by Thailand. How much lobbying can see a five C3 do? No substantial part of the activities of a tax is a non profit. Can be used for carrying and propaganda or attempting to influence legislation. And that's where the, like when you look at the examples around us, there are multiple entities who have a C3 and a C4 and they have been very effective in doing what they do. The features of C4, of course, we have unlimited lobbying. We can uh, help the candidates endorse, and then we, we can form political action committees and help the political candidates who are here and, and outside of the And then, what is the structure of this structural option that we could look at? And then, uh, I want to, the reason we, we establish this entity, and then there, all these entities, CRGC Action Network, Khalil uh, Bertu, the reasoning why. The, the connection between C3 and C4 is that it's not recommended to have similar but identical names and logos. You know, there are some limitations, which we can say it's a fine line that we all want. So, why is the CRGC to C4? Because the CRGC C3 is strengthened and the CRGC C4 is strengthened by this cooperation and working together. Basically, we are strengthened this by working together. We have better coordination to channel the youth and activists of members to civic activities and then have the proper position and voice in the public square, public square. This is very important. And then keep the C4 on the right track, not, in other words, not drifting away. And the bottom line, accountability to the community. This is where our, this is where our, this is where our, uh, you know, specialty comes in because we consider ourselves to be accountable to you, which is the community, through the residents, through the CRDC C3, which we are uh, attached to. And of course, we are avoiding the implications. So the benefit to C3 from C4 is that the C3 leadership, which we all recognize, which every community centers of yours is a part of C3. So for the C3 leadership, the biggest benefit from C4 is that the C3 leadership, instead of having a say, has a voice in C4. That is a big, big difference between having a say and having a voice. Because having a voice lets you determine the destiny of the community in general and helps you progress and provides a platform where Muslims can, uh, can embark on their political careers and at the end, benefits the Muslim community at large and Muslim community at large. And of course, I don't need to tell you the, the calamities that are happening throughout the world. That is because of the policies that are coming out of Washington. 
and inshallah these politicians we are we are we are creating we are developing we are supporting they are the future leaders and they will be in washington someday uh, you know fighting for our causes and this is you know just think about this how for how many years how many millions of dollars will you be supporting will be helping the refugees in the camp throughout the world we will all be doing this for all our life millions of dollars the change is not going to come the change is going to come when the policies change at washington so let's fight for it and let's fight for the cause of muslim amma and, and our reward is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the challenges are great all we are asked to do is try try hard and work and leave the results of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah reward you all for coming thank you very much jazakallah khair thank you Okay, thank you, Shemar. You know, he's again the leader of our organization, and without him, we would not be here today. So, thank you so much for all you do. So, now we're going to try to bring up Nabila Sayed. She's been waiting patiently because <laughs> she's like really past time here. Uh, she's calling, zooming in with us, so if we could. And with that, uh, she's obviously one of our rising stars in the community. You know, I have a story with Nabila, it's like interesting. I went to the same high school as her, but I graduated last century. I like to say that sounds really bad. <laughs> but it's true, it was last century I graduated. And you know, when I was at that friend high school in Palatine, I was like four of 800, no, 2,800 minorities. I mean, it was just crazy. It was very well dominated by white people. And so to see now the young generation like Nabila actually you know, come through that same school and actually have won a public office at her young age, it's just incredible. I'm so happy to see that it warms my heart. Okay, so now we got her almost there. I see her on the computer. And then, uh, you know, one thing I brought up earlier is the Muslim Action Day that I brought up, it's on May 3rd. That activity actually is only sponsored by the, the council, not the coalition, so I misspoke. So please make note of that. All the uh, credit should go to the CIOGC for doing those activities. They do it every year, they run that program. Let me see if we can help her.
Khaled. Okay, while we're waiting for this Nabila talk to come up live, I think we'll bring our candidates up. We have several candidates that want to speak, so let's see who's available here. So, Sister Farah and Sayyidah Shbaf, our, our candidate. Farah, you want to please come up? I'll give you a chance to speak while we're waiting. Thank you. Farah's running for the Hawthorne Wood uh, Village. Seat. So please uh, listen to her and she's going to talk about her, what she's doing. Thank you, Brother Khaled. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum everyone. Thank you, CIOGC uh, Action Network. Uh, we thank Brother uh, Shanawas for letting us get here and talk uh, as a candidate. My name is Farah Laman. I'm running for Village of Pathan Woods Trustee. Not many of you know where Pathan Woods is. It's all the way in Lake County, north. Uh, I am running for the village uh, trustee board. Uh, it's the third time that I'm running. I can relate to what Brother uh, Junaid Afif uh, mentioned in his talk, that third time is always a charm. You don't have to get discouraged the first two times that you don't make it. It's always um, interesting how the candidates face challenges. Uh, I am running for the trustee because I believe in myself and I believe in my community and I want to make a representation at the village board. Right now in our village, uh, we have all a white board and there isn't any uh, diversity or any fair representation that I see. And that's one reason why I want to run for the board. Uh, please support me in this cause. If you have friends and families in Pathan Woods, please call them, talk to them, ask them to support for me. And um, inshallah, God willing, I will be the trustee, the first child in the history of Pathan Woods to be the village trustee, especially coming from um, the Asian community. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Uh, for everyone who are here, is it possible that you all can uh, join us tonight at uh, Palak Restaurant? There is an equally able organization that's for disability. Um, they are doing a great job for disabled people all over the world. So please help them or at least contribute to them. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Farah. She's also very active with her organization. So now we have Nabila. If you could bring yourself back on. Finally got those technical difficulties fixed. Nabila, do you hear us? Can you get your video going there and your audio? All right, we don't hear you. Can you have the sound coming through? Hold on, Nabila, we can't hear you talking. Sorry, we're trying to get this going. Yeah, she was just going. All right, Nabila, can you try to speak and see if we'll hear you? No, we don't hear you. Her mic is on. No, we don't hear you right now. Yes. Well, we're seeing, maybe we found a problem. Nabil, are you there? Can you speak again? We hear you now. It's only on our So we got closer. Okay, try again. Nabil? Hello? Okay, we got it. Sorry about that. Okay, so we can hear you, Nabil. So, we appreciate your patience. <laughs> You've been hanging in there. Uh, she was also uh, campaigning today, or well, not campaign, working. She was at the St. Patrick's Day in Palatine, or one of the towns. So she wasn't able to join us in person, but look, we appreciate her joining Zoom-wise. 
So Nabila, we're going to go ahead and take uh, take over. Thank you for joining us. Here. I wish I could be there in person. We had a break this morning and then we had a different expo in Lake Zurich so at the district activity today. But I just want to start off to say thank you so much. Um, like some, I know some folks earlier were talking about the importance of young people getting involved in politics. And the only way that young Muslim people in our community feel as confident or empowered to get involved in politics, like myself, is because of the work that our community has been doing for decades. So the work that you all have been doing to lay the groundwork, lay the foundation so that people like me can run for office. So just that's what kind of victory, the, the ability, the privilege for me to go down and serve my district in Springfield is because of the hard work of our community. We are very powerful and inshallah, um, only growing in political power, uh, power voices heard is the things that we have seen as people. Um, I just want to say thank you to CIOG and C4 for putting together this amazing event and continuing to engage Muslims in this movement and our involvement in politics. And, and I wanted to shout out the incredible local and the Rockstar Navy one, I'll leave out a bunch of others. Um, but it is a big thing to run for office and to run for local office. And I caught a little bit of what I just now was saying about getting involved, being at parades, running for local office. Politics is local and it should be local. So these are some of the most important races, and I hope you all were able to hear from the candidates and support them uh, and make sure that we're elevating Muslim voices in politics in the best way possible. So thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and once again. Uh, congratulations to the CIOGC, the T4, and uh, I'm excited to partner with you in the work that we do together. Thank you. Assalamu Thank you very much, Nabila, for joining us. Appreciate your time. We're going to wrap it up here in a few minutes. So I'm going to have Ashfaq Sayed please come up. He's running for Naperville City Council. Very active individual, individual locally with politics and with the local budget. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ashfaq Hussain Sayed. And I'm one of the newest community members in Chicago land. I moved from Dubai to Chicago or Naperville six years ago. And from day one, I started running for community engagement with community, engaging with each and every person so that we, we can all can make a difference. So politically, yes, I have a passion where I work with a lot of politicians to make a difference in the community. And we as a community has to be engaged civically and then only politicians will listen to you. If we are not engaged, we are not attending those meetings, like Azamai said, it is very difficult to talk to the politician. So my always thought process was that engage people, engage community, engage elected officials and work with them, make sure we have our own representation. So I am running for Naperville City Council because of my passion. Not for the title, not for the position, but want to help community in a larger way. And I have been doing that. I am board of trustee at Naperville Public Library. And uh, I was the vice chair for Census 2020. And because of that, we are getting $36 million every year. So this is the larger impact which we can do. And I have worked with uh, CIGCO and other organizations during the census, and I can see how impactful that is. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, and uh, definitely, I know it's short of time. Thank you so much, Khaled. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for being patient and staying around to deliver that message. We appreciate it. One last little, we have a short talk with one of our board members, Maggie Slavin. She's going to talk about her experiences with uh, running a recent campaign and the efforts and what she's learned from that experience, and then we'll close the program. Maggie, yeah, well, uh, we're going to. Thank you, everyone. I know we're running for about five minutes. Thank everybody for, for being, uh, you know, being here today. Sorry I couldn't join you in person. My family's in town this weekend. Uh, but I just want to talk to you a little bit about um, being a student. Uh, those are here for me. Warren's campaign in the 50th Board of Chicago. Um, so, we bring on a message of compassion for neighbors, uh, fully funded public schools, justice for all people, and a safe community. And hopefully, we know how that election went, it did not go the way we wanted, but we learned a lot of things along the way. Um, and just a few highlights that I wanted to 
spiritual and uh, and this is made possible by the donations and the time that everybody has put in. Um, this person here on the screen, the top left, this is this woman here. She voted for the first time in her whole life because she felt uh fired by the campaign. Um, and she just really thought that was amazing. She felt the first ballot ever cast in the United States and she cast it for a Muslim candidate. Um, and then these are just a few pictures from throughout the campaign. Um, we have a lot of volunteers, a lot of people from different backgrounds, um, and so it's really a great time to have the outdoors. Uh, so I just also wanted to run a couple of stats with me. That was 5,000 words in the city of Ward. Um, so this Louise's uh, vote count of 3,024 votes, that's, first, that's the highest number of votes that has ever gotten um, in that race. Um, and we had a lot of, um, you know, we had a ton of endorsements, a lot of volunteers coming through. And it's a really important, I felt it was a very important cause to get behind because not only my teacher, but I also, uh, you know, I work on the social justice side of education as well. I see the living conditions that my students have to go through. I see the struggles of families, especially in the Devon area, the north side of Chicago, have to go through this for basic things. And voice, uh, I think, brought a message of hope and inspiration and trouble. So this is the, the um, right, this is the result. Of course, we didn't get as many votes as we wanted. So there's still a lot of work to do. There's still a lot of good things that we need to learn from this. Um, so we try to get a vote candidate in um, next time in Shalva. So I just want to also highlight this picture here where the um, current older person who is representative of the, you know, the largest Salvation Stronghold in Chicago, you can see one candidate on the, on the um, stage because the incumbent did not even show up to the candidate forum or to the debate. So it was important that he showed up and shared he wants to be part of this community. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you all. Um, so we're not sure what's next for movies yet, um, but hopefully it's all like the people to still be still doing some political organizing, still doing some really important groundwork. Um, so I just wanted to share that as well. And as a convert, um, this was a really cool experience for me too because I got to learn about a lot of different types of, of Muslims from all of other backgrounds. So I got to learn about um, these I got to learn about Bosnian and Muslims. I got to learn about a lot of different um, folks. So that was really, really cool. Um, and I really encourage you guys, uh, I just want to go back to this doorknock because I've been it a million times so much from the record. But the doorknock, we have to get out there, we have to be active if we want our candidates to win. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you coming. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Maggie. Yes, Maggie was involved with the, uh, the race for Moise Bawani in the local Chicago alderman election. He did pretty good for a newcomer again, a teacher from Chicago, and gave Deborah Silverstein a good run for her money. So we're going to wrap it up. I really thank you all for sticking around. I